If you're a regular here, or you're new, I won't judge, you might want to subscribe before we begin. I have a lot of Smash Brothers content like this, and we're about to go to some very interesting places. Smash roster speculation is a long-running tradition. Determining who might make it in next time, what updates veterans might receive, and who might get left on the cutting room floor. The last part's not as fun, but it's brought up all the time. In fact, several other channels have already tried cutting down Ultimate's roster. You've seen them around, I'm sure. So now, I'm throwing my proverbial hat into the ring with my own attempt. Consider this an experiment, to see if I can get the roster down by at least half while maintaining a good balance of characters, franchises, and time periods, so not just the first game of each series plus the 1990s. I'm putting special emphasis on keeping enough unique movesets and ideas to still have that mass appeal Smash does so well. Again, not trying to predict what could happen next game, just having some fun and testing my abilities. So, let's do this! How hard can it be, uh, right? First up, the characters who I think are least likely to stick around in any scenario where any cuts happen. No time to waste, so first is my pick for the single least likely veteran to return. Let's be honest, Pichu only came back because everyone is here. Pokemon has so many unique reps that a semi-clone former joke character is on the bottom rung. Combined with the Pokemon Company actively stopping Babymons from fighting in spin-offs anymore and… yeah. Pichu ain't the only former Melee clone here. Doc is stuck around like a chronic cold, but if we want enough room for unique characters in this trimmed down roster, we don't have room for this reclassed Mario anymore. Yeah, most of the same logic applies here. Hard to justify three versions of Link in a downsized roster, and Toon Link is a more distinct version of the same idea, which makes the young hero of time expendable. It's not just clones in the danger zone. Surprise picks can be fun in moderation, but not even a very inspired design can prevent getting out-prioritized by the other Mario characters. Sorry, Plant Gang. Now for a spicy one. Technically the elemental opposite of spicy. A lot of people wanted the Ice Climbers to come back, and hardly anyone plays them now. With a trimmed down roster, we can't afford to reserve space for fighters that just sit pretty on the menu. Which, unfortunately, melts away Popo and Nana's footing. And if you thought that one was spicy, I can hear the angry mob already. But don't blame me, blame Square Enix being notoriously stingy with their characters. Not only would Seth have to overcome that, he'd have to beat out multiple other Square Enix reps, including his own game's protagonist, or hope they all come back first. I just don't think a smaller roster would have any room. Alright, here's where we are so far. Still here? Haven't clicked away in shock and disgust yet? Hope you're in for the long haul, because we're just getting started. If we need to cut a lot of characters, one batch is easier to justify sending to the bench than any other. Echo Fighters are a fun addition that doesn't require much dev time, but since this experiment's based on roster slots instead, that makes them all expendable on a technicality. You know what, let's just bite the bullet and snap them all away now. From glorified alts in Daisy and Richter, to those with meaningful differences like Krom and Lucina, to Ken, who is basically a semi-clone masquerading as an Echo. This gets us closer to the halfway mark without requiring we get our hands dirty for a while longer. But we've still barely made a dent after two rounds down. If we're going to cut this roster by half, we have a long way to go. Brace yourself. The next place we can chip away? Series that haven't been active for a while, yet have multiple characters on the roster. We can trim some of the fat here, so to speak. And you probably guessed by the music where this was going. With its only revival attempt in over a decade falling flat on its face, Star Fox has faded into the background. This makes Falco and Wolf hard to keep around. Maybe the next revival attempt will stick, but until then, here we are. Yeah, this one hurts, but sorry Mother 3 fans. With the series officially concluded and his game still stuck in Japan, it's hard to justify keeping Lucas and his semi-clone moveset around. Just extenuating circumstances. So for how big a deal Kid Icarus Uprising was, the series hasn't done anything since, which makes Palutena also expendable. I wouldn't be surprised if a remaster got announced soon that makes me look like an idiot, but this is based on right now. And I threw a couple retro-ish characters in to make this round a little bigger. Cutting the roster necessitates trimming down on these, too. 
First to draw the short straw is the dog and duck, followed by an ambiguously retro boxer, depending on how you count the Wii game. Their NES outings may be famous, but that alone can't cut it anymore. Feeling the burn yet? With so many characters left to cut that at least some fan favorites will be in the line of fire, the flames are only going to get more intense. And speaking of something else fans have grown fond of... Third-party characters have become a staple of Smash, but they also require extra licensing and a lot more back and forth to pull off, which naturally makes them harder to hang on to. Realistically, several would get cut in a half-sized roster, and there are a few I think are more vulnerable than the rest. You know that part about Square Enix being difficult and costly to work with, and having a four-veteran logjam? Yeah, someone's getting screwed here, and I think it'll be Dragon Quest. Maybe beloved in Japan, but when your competition is your company's most popular character and the literal Smash Ballot winner? Yeah. Look, I know Persona's become a pretty big deal, but that doesn't stop Joker from being Sega's weakest link. He's not out-prioritizing Sonic, and Bayonetta's games have been funded by Nintendo for a while. This is one trap this Phantom Thief can't escape. A trap not even the power of a devil can punch through either. Despite Tekken being back in the spotlight, we have to cut somewhere, and at this stage, benching one of Bamco's two characters is easier than removing another company entirely. And last is... Uh-oh. Okay, hear me out. Konami is still difficult to trust on the video game front, and their wounds still linger from their fallout with Hideo Kojima, the driving force behind Snake getting into Brawl. I could legit see a timeline where Konami cares more about keeping Castlevania in Smash over Metal Gear. It's very plausible. Alright, how much progress have we made? With these blows to the roster, we must have taken some real strides toward... Oh dear lord, there's still three force left. Oh boy. Next on the chopping block for first parties, trimming down the reps from major series, or at least the ones with characters that are easiest to send to the bench. Yeah, no beating around the bush with this one. Despite a unique moveset, their game's divisive reputation makes Korin harder to justify keeping over several other Fire Emblem characters. It may not be fair, but justice is just an illusion, right? Which is what a lot of Melee fans are about to think, because Roy's semi-clone moveset is also hard to justify over more unique fighters. Maybe a remake of his game could fix that eventually. Metroid may not have as many reps as some other series, but one of them's in a shaky position, with the roster getting ever smaller, keeping the armorless version of Samus who hasn't done much since Zero Mission is a tall order. Stick to the Varia suit, lady. Speaking of inactive characters... This one's gonna hurt the old heads in the crowd, but have you noticed the only thing Sheik's been in since Ocarina of Time is Hyrule Warriors almost a decade ago? It's gotten too hard to justify her spot over the remaining Zelda characters. Being iconic to Melee isn't enough. And Pokemon has a couple more to chip away at. The most recent ad is actually the next most vulnerable. Hard to keep a mostly generic wrestler moveset around when there are other mons doing more distinct stuff. That said, brace yourself because it's the end of the line for our first of the original 12. Jigglypuff may be a Smash staple, but she's almost been cut for real at least once already, and it's been a long time since the original anime. We can't afford to let seniority stay our hands anymore. Alright, that wasn't horrible? Inching ever closer to the halfway mark, but it keeps getting tougher, so who'll be next to bow out? Yeah, time for round two. To make the roster even smaller, we need to trim a few more third parties. Apologies to their fans in advance. Terry's really grown on people since the decidedly mixed reception of his reveal, but we're at a point now where he's getting out-muscled by bigger characters from bigger series. It's not his fault, it's just a tough room. A very tough room. At this point, we pretty much need to trim it down to just one character per third-party company unless we want to leave more than just SNK out in the cold completely. To all of Sora's many fans, I'm sorry, but Cloud just beats him out. We also need to give someone from Sega the boot. In this case, a summon giant demonic boot. Bayonetta can't out-prioritize Sonic, which means we have two ballot winners dropping back-to-back. -back. Oof. Speaking of ballot favorites that'll hurt to cut, this one might rile up some people. We need someone from Microsoft to drop out, and while the Baron Bird have a lot of fans nostalgic for their platformers, they're beaten out by the modern behemoth that is Minecraft. And that's not even the toughest cut of this batch. Brace yourself. 
Mega Man fans, I am so sorry, but with how Capcom's IPs have done lately, I legit think that if they could only keep one character in Smash, they'd pick Ryu first. I swear I'm hoping for Mega Man 12 to happen like the rest of you, but this roster just doesn't have room for the Blue Bomber anymore. Still here after all of that? We have a little more to go to get it down to half. How difficult can it be? So, uh, to make the last step to reach halfway, this is gonna get rough. A lot of major first-party characters aren't going to make it. We have a lot of them to go over, so I'm just gonna rapid-fire these. Gotta start somewhere. Min Min is one of the newest faces on the roster, but with the future of ARMS uncertain, it puts her in a precarious position her springy limbs can't save her from anymore. Next, Mario loses another character. I went back and forth between Bowser Jr. and Rosalina, but the latter is more unique as Smash's only puppet fighter. Jr., you're grounded. This semi-clone made it further than the others, probably because he's so visually different and has a few moves specific to him, but now those aren't enough to keep the Hero of Winds aloft. Wii Fit was huge back in the day, but its time has come and gone. Has a successor picking up the slack, but this experiment isn't accounting for newcomers. Not that it helps here. We're officially running short on space for retro characters. Came down to Game & Watch or Rob, and I ultimately decided the robot would be the last retro standing. Not even being the single most popular Fire Emblem character is enough now. Ike just doesn't have enough of an argument over the face of the franchise, the rep from Fire Emblem's most popular game, and the very unique fighter from the game that saved it. Pokemon isn't much better off. We have to trim somewhere, and we want to keep the extremely prominent later gen reps, so Gen 1 again it is. Back to Cerulean Cave with you. And finally, to get us down low enough, we have to eliminate an entire feature from the roster. The Mii Fighters have their niche as creative characters, but there just isn't room for them anymore. Whew. And with that, we have cut the roster in half. Well, slightly under it thanks to the Mii's. How does it look? Salvageable? But wait, you might be thinking. Something isn't right. Look at how much time this video still has. Well, I did say I wanted to take this experiment as far as I could. Let's see if we can get this roster even smaller and still keep it viable. All right, let's rip this bandage off now before it gets any harder to. Normally, I'm not the type to kick out every third-party character, but if we're going to get this roster down as small as we can, it's going to have to happen eventually. There are some brutal exclusions here. Sonic, Pac-Man, Ryu, Cloud, Simon Belmont, and Steve are all icons of their respective genres and companies. But for the sake of this experiment, we cannot let that stay our hand anymore. Oof. Yet even with that done, even with us under Brawl's roster size now, we still have further to go. It may be all Nintendo the rest of the way, but every remaining character has something going for them. No way to avoid it. This is going to hurt. So I say... No way to sugarcoat it. The whole rest of the way will be brutal. But to cut the roster as short as possible, it must be done. Mentally ready? That part from before about being a unique archetype? It's not enough anymore, and Rosalina is just barely a weak enough Link that she can't hang on any longer. Next is another tough one. Ever-decreasing space meant it came down to cutting Diddy or K. Rule, and it just didn't feel right to bench the character who got so much support for three games straight first. Surprised this pair made it this far? Xenoblade just keeps growing, but even that isn't enough now. Some may celebrate Pyra and Mithra bowing out, while others would be distraught to see them leave. Such is the duality of roster cuts. From extremely advanced to primitive, it's the end of the line for the retro characters. There are too many other veterans we still need to keep, which means it's finally time to flip the off switch on Rob. Pokemon's gotten away with hanging on to characters because three are crammed into one slot, but not now. More than just Gen 1 matters for this series, and to keep that wider representation a little longer, the trainer's trio has to hang it up. So much support for so long, but it no longer matters now. Not even Ridley's uncanny ability to come back from the dead over and over can save him from being the biggest of cuts. You fought valiantly, Meta Knight, but there isn't enough space to justify three Kirby characters anymore. Once the strongest character in Smash history, now laid low by roster constraints. And... I've put this off long enough. 
Might well have been personal bias that let Robin survive this far, but even I can't hold off this fate anymore. Might hail from a pivotal point in the series, but Fire Emblem can't justify three reps anymore. And last, the most painful cut yet. Look, I... we can't afford to rely on seniority. Ness may be iconic now, but with the roster shrinking further and the Mother series concluded, sometimes you have to make very difficult decisions. Oof. See how hard it can be to do this? But screw it, we've come this far. Let's see this through to the end. We're close to melee roster size now and getting smaller still. Who's going to fall next? Okay, you probably figured out by the music. The character who only made it into Melee as a clone finds himself with no more room to remain. In the real world, he'll hopefully stick around with a reworked moveset, but here, he's getting sealed back away. Ganon isn't the only villain taking a fall. K. Rool's gotten back up repeatedly, but not even his history and massive support base are enough to keep his ship afloat any longer. Maybe he'll still be in the next DK game? Animal Crossing's become a huge deal nowadays, especially after its latest outing came out at the absolute perfect time. But now, the roster is too hard-pressed to keep two from this series around. Sorry, Isabel. Pokemon's taken another hit too, despite its massive, varied cast. Lucario may be one of the most popular mons in the entire series and have a unique niche in Smash, but now, it's not enough. You fought well. The Marioverse is really feeling the pinch now with another cut. Wario was so high up on Sakurai's list that he almost got into Melee. But now, all the money and treasure in the world can't save him. Surprised to see Byleth hang on this long? The pick that saw unbridled rage upon their reveal aged surprisingly well with how popular Three Houses still is. But with the roster under Melee levels now, Fire Emblem will drop down to just one. And last... Another of the original twelve has fallen. Star Fox is long past its heyday, and we can't judge merits on nostalgia alone. If a roster this small was made today, I just can't see him being included. Fox's instincts can't guide him any further anymore. We're down to twenty. Has this madness gone too far? How much further can we take the roster without losing all cohesiveness? Well, just a little more. All right, you've probably figured out what I'm doing here. Let's see this through to the end. Pit, you've hung on as long as you could. Your series may not be very big, but Uprising had an impact long beyond the 3DS. Enough that people are hoping for a remaster. But time for you to rest for now. How about Pikmin 4 bringing the series back into relevance? But if we're committing to this, there just isn't any room anymore for this tiny spaceman and his army of walking plants. I remember how hard fans had to fight to give Xenoblade a chance outside Japan. Now here we are with Shulk making it this far. But no visions of the future can save him with a roster this small. And it's also end of the line for the most popular Pokemon, according to that 2020 Google poll that wasn't particularly close. Smash 64 had room for two Mons originally, but there are too many other franchises worth including now. Which is why there's no room for a second Zelda character either. Not even the one the series is named after. It takes a level head and a lot of wisdom to make tough choices like these, but it never gets any easier. And accompanying Zelda is another princess. We're reaching numbers so low that there's not enough room for Peach anymore. Crazy to think that, yet this is what it takes to bring the roster this low. Cutting almost all of the royalty now, apparently. No space left for a second Kirby character. Not even one rumored to have been planned for Smash 64 at one point. We have one more cut to make. Who's it going to be? I'm sorry, Luigi. We've made so many tough choices, but this one might be the toughest of all. I just needed room for enough fully unique characters, and he just fell short. Poor guy can't catch a break anywhere, can he? The dust has settled. Here is our final roster, a mere 12 fighters strong just like Smash 64. I did what I could to hit the right combination of series, characters, and archetypes. No easy feat with a roster this constrained. Even now, I'm not 100% on it. Still don't know if cutting Luigi to keep Bowser was the right call, and part of me still thinks Greninja should have stayed. Keeping Captain Falcon after some other cuts feels kind of like a reach, but I've committed enough fan sacrilege already. Plus, F-Zero's actually done something lately. 
It took a lot of painful cuts to get to here. Honestly, if Smash made its debut nowadays, the 20 or even 27 character roster is probably what the launch lineup would look like. Maybe the 36 character one by the end of DLC? If anything, this shows how brutal a job it is to trim the roster down once you reach a certain point. It's why I've advocated for a soft reboot, with 40-ish veterans staying alongside a bunch of newcomers. But how about you? Any thoughts on how this experiment went? How does my half-size roster stack up to what the other YouTubers did? I'd like to think it measures up, but you're the judge of that, not me. Special thanks to the following for helping with this video. Thanks as well to my patrons for the continued support. One roster I'm relieved to see keeps getting bigger. So, until next time, hopefully the future isn't as painful as this video was.